ඔෆිස් එකේ දී විතරක් නෙවෙයි මම දැන් ගෙදරදිත් IDD කෝස් ගන්න SLT ෆෝන් එකේ ඔබේ නිවසේ SLT දුරකථනය දැන් IDD පහසුකම සහිතයි Good evening tonight position pending Discussion on cabinet reshuffle is still pending as the meeting between the premier and the president unexpectedly postponed. New formula. Oil price is scheduled to be submitted to cabinet tomorrow for approval. State Minister Dr. Harsha De Silva justifies having a formula to determine prices. We need to revise prices so that these large operational losses can be mitigated. Warning lights. UNP backbenchers request the leadership to act on promised reforms prior to the end of this month. Rejecting abolishment. Social Alliance General Secretary Attorney Raja Kolure says abolishing the executive presidency will be detrimental for the future stability of the country. It will weaken the government, affect the defense of the country. And it's a boy. The Duchess of Cambridge, wife of Britain's Prince William, gives birth to a boy. He is now fifth in line to the British throne. It's nine o'clock on the dot. Welcome to First at Nine, other than us, premier English news coverage. Hello, everyone. I'm Mahesh Johnny. Will a price formula for fuel be suitable for Sri Lanka? We pose that question to the Minister of Economic Reforms. That's coming up later on in the show. But first, we begin with the latest on the pending cabinet reshuffle. Leader of the House, Minister Lakshman Kiriala states that the President and the Prime Minister will take measures to navigate the unity government based on a new agreement. In the meantime, political sources reveal that the primary draft by the committee headed by Minister Dr. Sarath Amunugama appointed to determine the SLFP's future conduct with the unity government will be handed to the President within the next two days. The government recently decided to reshuffle the cabinet of ministers and secretaries to the president and prime minister who were handed the responsibility of formulating the subject areas on a scientific basis. A spokesperson of the government, however, told Adha Dharana that the cabinet reshuffle will be done before the 1st of May. In the meantime, Minister Akhle Viraj Karevasam stated that a discussion is scheduled to be held between the president and the prime minister regarding the cabinet reshuffle today. No such meeting, however, took place today. Meanwhile, Minister Lakshman Kiriyal and Parliamentarian Ravi Karuna Nayak expressed their views on the cabinet reshuffle. It doesn't have an impact at all. It is better that they leave without inconveniencing others. We are working closely with the remaining members. We have shown that the UNP alone can establish a government. Why we are not doing this is purely because we promise that we will work together. We fulfill our promises. A new cabinet will take oath soon. The President and the Prime Minister will soon sign an MOU on taking the government of good governance forward. The remaining period of this government will be governed by the UNP together with the SLFP. We have also prepared a program for the coming two years. Minister Dr. Sarat Amrugama, who is also the head of the committee appointed to determine the SLFP's future conduct in the unity government, stated recently that a primary draft is being prepared in this regard. According to political sources, the said draft will be handed over to the President within the next two days. In the meantime, President Maitri Pala Sirisena signed the Gazette notification to commence the inaugural session of Parliament at 2.15pm on the 8th of May. The Parliament was prorogued on the 12th of this month. The President's media unit stated that the Gazette notification will be sent to the Department of Government Printing. State Minister Ajit P. Pereira says that they would launch a struggle if the proposed UNP reforms are not carried out before May Day. Several other views were also expressed during the day over the much-talked-about United National Party reforms. I still believe that we can carry out the party reforms. We, the political bureau, is meeting again tomorrow as well. Our hope is to finish this before the May Day. 
otherwise we will fight against it. That is an assurance. Permanent posts of leaders, deputy or assistant leaders should not be there in a party. Serious consequences will occur unless the party goes for reforms. If we listen to the people in the village, we should not be afraid of anyone. We will fight against it if they go for any kind of agreements with anyone. We gave enough time for the Prime Minister to bat. Now give us a chance to bat as well. Give a chance for Sajid to bat. Give a chance to Navin Disanayaka too. It is wrong that only the Prime Minister gets to bat. The Socialist Alliance claims that abolishing the executive presidency will be detrimental for the future stability of the country. Convening a media briefing, its General Secretary Raja Kolure said that the country's focus should be for quick economic recovery in order to save Sri Lanka from plunging into instability. The uh, so-called national government has practically fallen. At the same time, there is... Uh, instability in the government in the country and uh, that affects the economy and governance and uh, social activity. This instability can be brought to an end only by holding elections. The abolition of the executive presidency, we don't agree it will weaken the government, affect the defense of the country. Under a parliamentary system, the prime minister becomes the uh, chief executive. He can advise the president to implement all the laws that pertain to the powers of the president. So therefore, only an executive presidential system can save the country from vulnerability in regard to the defense. The Pivituru Hela Urume accuses that Prime Minister Ranu Vikramasinghe is the force behind the JVP's proposal to abolish the executive presidency. Speaking at a media briefing, its secretary Upal Vijayasinghe states that the Prime Minister wants to navigate the country according to the agendas of external forces. Ranjan Ramanayaka, api dakhinava hari nishabda. Ranjan Ramanayaka is quiet when it comes to voicing opinions on the bond scam. He is trying to survive with the help of President Maitripala Sirisena. Knowing very well that he is not even worth a cent, he still supports anything that Ranu Vikramasinghe does. He should be imprisoned, as he has made strong statements against the judiciary. The proposal to abolish the executive presidency is made by the Janata Vimukti Peramuna. Even though they proposed it, Ranil Vikramasinghe is the force behind this, and it's a well-known fact. Ranil Vikramasinghe wants to direct this country according to the agendas of the Western countries, without any interruption. If you want to save this country for future generations, we should have an executive presidency. Also in other local stories we have for you tonight, the Government Medical Officers Association says that the government medical doctors will initiate a strike action due to the fact that the new Kothalawala Defence University Act provided no benefits for SITEM students but for the SITEM Institute. GMOS Secretary Dr. Haritha Aludge addressing a media briefing in Colombo added that they have also observed an active effort to legalise the SITEM Institute instead of abolishing it. The decision to abolish SITEM and therefore some individuals including the UGC chairman and some uh, representatives of the legal sector, they are trying their best to legalize the SITEM and proceed with the SITEM MBBS degree. And therefore we have decided that we will convene a special meeting on 27th of uh, this month of all trade unions, political parties, student movements and other parent groups and other uh, civil organizations and also we have decided to uh, convene our special general committee meeting on 3rd of May and definitely we are going to declare a strike action on 3rd of May if the, uh, if the solutions are not given to this problem by 3rd of May. Now here's a look at some other stories from across Sri Lanka. Minister of Education Akhil Viraj Karyavasum has advised the Department of Examination to modernize its examination process and to make use of new technology for this task. As a measure in this process, 12 officials from the Department of Examinations and three senior lecturers of the National Institute of Education will attend a workshop at the Putra University in Malaysia. The workshop will be on conducting and evaluation of examinations online. 
A 30-year-old woman residing in the area of Habarakade in Hiniduma had murdered her 10-year-old son and taken her own life by hanging herself. It has been revealed that the woman has been receiving treatment for psychological issues. The Hiniduma police are conducting further investigations. A 30-year-old man had committed suicide by jumping onto an oncoming train at Palavardana in Vallava along with his 8-month-old son. The man has been identified as Chatura Gayan Madhushankar. It has been revealed that the man had committed suicide due to a family dispute. Vallava police are conducting further investigations. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verena 24-7. On to business news now. The oil price formula is scheduled to be submitted to Cabinet tomorrow for approval, which will see the revision of oil prices. Speaking to First at Nine, State Minister of National Policies and Economic Affairs, Dr. Harsha De Silva says it's vital that the government comes up with such a price formula as this would ensure fairness for consumers as they will pay for what they consume. On the 24th of last month, the Lanka Indian Oil Company increased the prices of diesel by 5 rupees while 92 octane and petrol was increased by 9 rupees, taking into consideration the increasing world market oil prices. Oil has rallied sharply in recent days to see West Texas Intermediate trading at just under $70 per barrel and Brent breaking through the $70 per barrel mark, with crude trading at its highest price since 2014. The surge in oil can be directly attributed to a wide variety of geopolitical risks, which are sparking considerable fears that global oil supplies could be sharply constrained in coming months. This has triggered considerable speculation that $100 per barrel is on its way. Speaking to Adhidharna, Professor of Economics at the Shrija Wadhanapura University, Dr. Jana Kumar Singh has spoke on the need for a new price formula. If we have an oil price mechanism, then automatic the domestic oil prices will adjust to the global oil price. So there for no need a government interference to decide the oil price if we have an oil price mechanism. Especially when you introduce in the oil price mechanism a country like Sri Lanka, especially a developing country, which wants to enhance the investment, especially to boost the economy you have to be very careful why because oil prices has been and continue to be a deciding factor for prices of the essential commodities in sri lanka but on the other hand if you talk about the industry it is better if we have a, a oil price mechanism because it is easy to predict the future if we have a oil price mechanism because no government interference will enhance the confidence of the investors because they could predict the oil price in advance if you have a clear practice to in decides the oil price in the uh, retail market. It is in this backdrop the Ministry of Finance has decided to submit the final price formula to Cabinet tomorrow for approval and that once the final price formula is approved, oil prices will see revisions once in every two to three months. According to the Secretary of the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, Upali Mara Singha, Sipetco had incurred a massive loss of 38 million rupees per day due to the Indian oil company's fuel price hike. Convening a media briefing today, Chairman of the Sipetco, Jatika Sevaka Sangamir, Ananda Palita, said that there is an urgent requirement in order to avoid further losses to Sipetco. The Sipetco owes 2.3 billion US dollars to BOC and People's Bank. The government owes Sipetco 315 billion rupees for kerosene that is being given at a concessionary price, while the Ceylon Electricity Board owes Sipetco 53 billion rupees. All we ask is to not introduce a pricing formula without settling the debts owed to Sipetco. We also ask to provide the same concession granted to LIOC and do not increase taxes. <laughs> Speaking to Adha Derana, State Minister of National Policies and Economic Affairs, Dr. Harsha De Silva said that the country is at the right stage to implement the fuel price formula. The government is bringing in a fuel price formula because it is in the best interest of all people in the uh, medium run. Perhaps it may cause a little bit of uneasiness, a little difficulty at the very beginning. 
the central bank has calculated the uh, one-time increase in prices uh, to about 1%. Given that inflation is very low, as you know, inflation is at a historical low at 3.2% on the National Consumer Price Index. Whatever our political opponents say on your television channel, it is the lowest uh, in a very long time at 3.2%. People cannot really complain, but prices have dropped. So this, I think, is not a bad time if you look at it strategically. So this is what has to be done, and it will be done. And uh, it will be done in a way that the impact uh, will be felt the least. The minister also went on to explain on justifying this formula. What's happening with this fuel price uh, subsidy uh, that we have kept fuel prices static uh, since the advent of the, the, this government in 2015 at 117 a litre for petrol and 95 per litre for diesel. It has, in the recent times, um, sort of, it has distorted the usage uh, of petrol and diesel. 70% of the fuel is used by the top 30% of the population. The bottom 40% of the population use the 30% and they use it directly and indirectly through public transport. So essentially what we are doing by holding administratively determined prices for fuel is we cross-subsidize the rich with taxes on the poor. Right Now this is something that might be difficult at first glance to appreciate, but that is what is happening because you drive your BMW or you drive your Montero or Pajero or whatever it is that you have to the fuel station down Flower Road and you pump into it dozens and dozens and sometimes hundreds of litres into those gas guzzling tanks. Whereas the common person rides the bus uh, or rides a, a you know, three-wheeler, what have you, uh, and he or she uses very little, uh, but the subsidy then is transferred uh, to the rich person from the taxes of the poor person. It is always better if you are looking at uh, the situation from a um, uh, sort of equality or sort of equity point of view, more social market point of view, uh, to have cost reflective prices. So that is why whether it is fuel or whether it is something else, the cost reflective prices are always better uh, making sure people pay the value of what they consume. Director of the Ministry of Power and Renewable Energy, Sulakshana Jawadana, states that the current weather patterns has affected large-scale and small-scale hydropower plants in the country as climate is one major factor that affects generation capacity as well as demand of power generation. The director made this remark in an exclusive interview to First at Nine. Definitely, climate is one of the factors that affect the generation capacities as well as the demand. We are depending on uh, hydro to uh, meet uh, daily demand. We do have 1390 megawatt of large scale hydro and also 360 megawatt of small scale hydro. Uh, these two type of power plants will be affected with the uh, weather pattern. He further states that safety measures have been taken to minimize the pollution caused by diesel power plants. Yeah, there are options, I mean the uh, plans to minimize the environmental impact. But uh, when it comes to the meeting of uh, daily demand, you know that during dry season we can't uh, generate electricity from hydropower plants as planned. So we compel to run diesel power plants, uh, but uh, precautions or safety measures uh, taken to minimize the environmental impacts. 
The Department of Census and Statistics announced today uh, the national inflation fell to 2.8% in the 12 month to March 2018, with the index falling from 0.7% in the month. The department in its monthly statement says that the year-on-year -year inflation based on National Consumer Price Index has declined to 2.8% from 3.2% in February 2018. When compared to month-on-month -month changes, NCPI in March has decreased to 122.8% from 123.7 reported in February 2018. Food prices had fallen 0.8% while non-food had risen by 0.08%. The decrease in expenditure value of food items was due to the price decrease of vegetables, big onions, rice, red onions, banana, fresh fish, green chilies, potatoes and coconuts. However, increases in expenditure value in index were reported due to price increases of dry sprats, infant milk powder, eggs and limes. Let's take you to the stock market now. The all share price index ended marginally weaker today, hitting a one week closing low as investors awaited fresh cues as a new cabinet is expected to be sworn in this week. The Colombo stock index ended 0.24% weaker at 6,525.17, its lowest close since April 16. Now, here is Imeshri Fernando from the Colombo Stock Exchange for a full report. The turnover was 554.76 million rupees with 10.9 million shares change in hands in 4,584 trades. The market capitalization at the end of the day was 3,046.44 billion rupees. Today's foreign purchases were 172.4 million rupees and foreign sales were 71.89 million rupees. There were two crossings today and the crossing turnover was 89.46 million rupees. While making international headlines, the Duchess of Cambridge, wife of Britain's Prince William, has given birth to a son. The Duke of Cambridge was present for the birth of the couple's th third child at 11 a.m. local time at St. Mary's Hospital in Paddington, West London. The newest arrival to the royal family weighs around 8 pounds and 7 ounces, and both mother and baby are doing well, according to the palace. Kensington Palace said in a statement on Twitter, the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh the Prince of Wales, the Duchess of Cornwall, Prince Harry and members of both families have been informed and are delighted with the news. The royal baby is fifth in line to the British throne after grandfather Prince Charles, father Prince William and two siblings. The newest addition to the royal family is a younger brother to Prince George who is four years old and Princess Charlotte and the Queen Elizabeth II's sixth great-grandchild. In other international stories, South Korea halted the propaganda broadcast. It blares across border at North Korea today in an attempt to create a peaceful atmosphere ahead of the first inter-Korean summit in a decade scheduled for later this week. The broadcast was, was stopped at midnight, but it did not specify whether they would resume after the summit this Friday between South Korean President Moon Jae-in and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. South Korea has stopped broadcasting propaganda via loudspeakers along the border with North Korea, which it said will set the tone for top-level talks this Friday. It is the first time in more than two years a South Korean broadcast, which include a mixture of news, South Korean pop music and criticism of the North Korean regime, have been stopped. Broadcasts were halted in mid-2015, only to be restarted in January of 2016, following North Korea's fourth nuclear test. North Korea said on Saturday that it was suspending nuclear and missile tests and scrapping its nuclear test site and instead pursuing economic growth and peace. 
The North has its own propaganda broadcast at the border, but a Defence Ministry official said he could not verify whether the North had stopped its broadcasts. In February, the North lowered the volume of its border propaganda after the Winter Olympics opening ceremony in South Korea's Pyeongchang. Former First Lady Barbara Bush was remembered at her funeral on Saturday as a formidable but caring figure whose devotion to her family was matched only by her commitment to public service. Some 1,500 mourners, including governors, senators and former U.S. presidents gathered, by, uh, gathered to pay tribute to the matriarch of one of the country's most prominent political dynasties who died last Tuesday at the age of 92. Bush, the wife of the 41st President of the United States, George George H. W. Bush and the mother of the 43rd President George W. Bush was lauded as an inspiration both to the country and her loved ones. Barbara Bush was buried on the grounds of the George H. W. Bush Library and Museum at Texas A&M University next to her daughter Robin who died of leukemia at the age of three. Now here's a look at some other emerging stories from across the world. Japanese top nuclear negotiator Kenji Kanasugi held a meeting with South Korean counterpart Lee Do Hoon today in Seoul to discuss North Korea's nuclear issue and boost bilateral ties ahead of the first inter-Korean summit in a decade. The inter-Korean talks last Friday and a planned meeting between Kim and Trump in the coming weeks have raised hopes of an easing in tensions that reached a crescendo last year amid a flurry of North Korean missile tests. Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega said yesterday a planned overhaul of the welfare system that sparked days of deadly protests, which has killed seven people thus far, had been cancelled. Ortega has been on the defensive since demonstrations began last Wednesday against a plan to increase worker contributions to social security and to lower pensions. The Chinese government's top diplomat state councillor Wang Yi said yesterday that Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit China later this week for an informal meeting with President Xi Jinping. The announcement of the informal meeting was made after talks with visiting Indian Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj in Beijing. British choir The 16 made Vatican history yesterday as their performance of James Macmillan's Starboard Martyr became the first ever concert to be live-streamed from the Sistine Chapel. The choral group, accompanied by the Britain Sinfonia Chamber Orchestra, were visibly moved as they performed in the chapel, home to Michelangelo's famous ceiling frescoes and one of the wonders of Western civilization. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Dharana 24-7. A very good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Your temperatures will range between 20 and 34 degrees Celsius with the highest temperature recorded in the northern province. Now, if you take a look at the map, you can see that there will be some low precipitation zones expected in the western and southern region of the island over the course of the day. However, some cloudy skies are expected in the areas of Batiklo as well as Vauni and Putlam with some sunny weather forecasts for the Jaffna area. Moving downwards, however, some thunder showers are expected in the areas of Kandy, Colombo and Gaul. That is it from your weather centre tonight. Up next is your city by city forecast. And that is a part of your world tonight right here on Other Than 24 7. First at 9 will return tomorrow at the same time. Be sure to join us then. As we wrap things up for tonight, we leave you with some sights and sounds of this paradise island, Sri Lanka. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night. The news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other Verana 24 7.